Hi everyone welcome to my channel Autocar 09 The Jag Panther tank destroyer represents one of the most sophisticated examples of German armored engineering during the Second World War, designed to combine the firepower of the deadly 88mm gun with the proven mobility of the Panther chassis. The Jag Panther was a weapon of precision and power. Its name translates to Hunting Panther, and that's exactly what it was built to do, stalk, engage, and destroy enemy armor with surgical efficiency. In 2026, more than 80 years after it first appeared on the battlefield, the Jag Panther continues to be studied by historians, military analysts, and enthusiasts as a remarkable example of tank destroyer designa one that managed to combine mobility, firepower, and protection into a formidable battlefield asset, even though it arrived too late and in too few numbers to change the tide of the war. The concept for the Jag Panther emerged in 1942 as German military planners began to recognize the urgent need for more powerful tank destroyers to counter the increasingly formidable Soviet T-34 S and KV series tanks. The Eastern Front was taking a heavy toll on Germany's Panzer divisions, and the need for vehicles capable of mounting large caliber, high-velocity guns became apparent. While self-propelled guns like the Nashorn and Ferdinand were already in service, they had shortcomings of particularly in mobility, armor protection, and mechanical reliability. The answer came in the form of an idea that had already proven successful. Take a powerful anti-tank gun, place it on an existing tank chassis, and create a mobile, hard-hitting vehicle that could be built quickly and perform effectively. For the Jag Panther, that meant pairing the famous 8.8 cm back. 43 Guna capable of defeating any allied armor with a robust and fast Panther chassis. Development began in earnest in 1943, and by mid-1944 the first production models rolled out of the MAG and MNH factories. From a design standpoint, the Jag Panther was a major improvement over earlier German tank destroyers. It featured stope armor up to 80 mm thick on the front glassy, providing effective protection against most allied anti-tank weapons of the day. The sides and rear were thinner, as was common in most German tanks, but the vehicle was built with the understanding that it would engage enemies from the front, ideally from concealed ambush positions. The hull was sleek and angular presenting a minimal profile and excellent ballistic shaping. At the front sat the powerful 88mm L-71 gun, the same weapon used on the Tiger II heavy tank. This gun could penetrate over 200mm of armor at 1000m with standard AP rounds, and even more with specialized ammunition. It was highly accurate, deadly at long ranges, and could knock out virtually any tank fielded by the Allies during the war. The crew of the Jag Panther consisted of five men, a commander, gunner, loader, driver, and radio operator. Inside the vehicle, the layout was tight but logical. Ammunition storage was sufficient for sustained engagements, with around 60 rounds carried. The gun had limited traversy only about 12 degrees to either side dia but that was expected for a casemate-style tank destroyer. To change aim dramatically, the entire vehicle had to turn. Fortunately, the Panther chassis was well suited to this. Powered by the Maybach HL 230P30 V12 engine, the Jag Panther had nearly 700 horsepower and could reach speeds of up to 46 km per hour on roads, with a range of about 200 km. Its suspension, based on the Panther's interleaved road wheel design, provided good cross-country performance, although it was notoriously difficult to maintain in muddy or frozen conditions. On the battlefield, the Jag Panther was a fearsome opponent. It was especially effective in defensive roles, where it could use its long-range firepower and frontal armor to maximum effect. In engagements such as those on the Western Front in 1944 and 1945, Jag Panthers ambushed Allied armor from tree lines, ridges, or concealed positions, destroying Sherman's, Cromwell's, and even Churchill tanks before they could return fire. The 88mm gun's high velocity meant that rounds arrived at targets with devastating impact and little drop. Against Soviet forces on the Eastern Front, Jagged Panthers were used more selectively, often in specialized units that worked alongside Panthers and infantry support. Their presence on the battlefield forced Allied commanders to alter tactics 
avoid known kill zones, and rely more heavily on air support and artillery to deal with these tank killers. <laughs>